Hi, this is Mark Brickler, and in this podcast, I want to talk about power portals, which is stepping from one level of spiritual authority and power into another level. Like a portal is like a, a gate or a doorway, doorway. And I just finished reading Joshua Mills' brand new book, which is just coming out. It's called Power Portals, and, and he shares a whole book about doing about this, his own experience with it. It's a wonderful book fascinating book. Strongly encourage you to get it, and I'll give you a link to it uh, below this. Now, power portals can be called by different names, um, but in this book, Josh, Joshua Mills is calling them power portals, which is, sounds good to me. It reminded me of a testimony I just heard uh, John Arnott share in a video interview that he was doing. He was talking about how he stepped through a power portal, how he stepped into a place of anointing, where he was able to release the Toronto blessing, which has now gone on for more than a quarter of a century. It's touched millions of people around the world. More than 1 million people have come to attend his church, uh, now called Catch the Fire Church in Toronto. You can Google that church if you want to and just learn about the history and learn about it, what, it, what it's currently doing. And when John and his wife Carol were hungry to step into this authority, the, into revival, the Lord told him to do a few things. The Lord said, uh, give me your mornings. So him and Carol spent several months just uh, spending their mornings in Bible study, prayer, worship. And then the other thing the Lord said to him is, he said, hang around people who already move in this anointing. And so John and Carol went and visited a revival taking place in South America. And uh, they were in a huge gathering. There was prayer ministry taking place at the close of the service. People were being slain in the spirit. John was slain in the spirit. He was laying on the floor, just pondering the whole thing that had just happened. And, and um, the man, the evangelist, who the lead pastor of the church who had been praying for him, he turned to him and he asked him a question. He said, do you want this? And John was taken back. He said, well, of course I want it. I flew thousands of miles to get here. And the pastor said, then take it. And uh, John said that that really adjusted him on the inside. So he was no longer just passively waiting for God to do something. He was going to meet God halfway. That's the phrase that he used, meeting God halfway. And I'm sure at some places he's defined it. He didn't define it, what that meant in, in that particular video interview, but I'm sure he has definition for it. So, so I did ponder the question, what does it mean to meet God halfway? Because I agree, sitting there passively asking God to do stuff doesn't get the job done. You really need to step out in faith and, and meet God. So I'm going to suggest several things that the Lord spoke back to me that are involved in meeting God halfway. Um, John, John Arnott did these things. Uh, Joshua Mills, uh, in his book, Power Portals, he did these things. Sean Boltz, who has a tremendous prophetic ministry out in California at Bill Johnson's church. He just a very precise word of wisdom. Uh, he took these steps. Um, I've taken these steps and I suspect everybody who's moved into a new anointing in their life, including you, have taken these steps. So it begins, number one, just by having a desire in your heart, a passion in your heart, placed there by God, that you want to step into an area, you want to master an area. And I believe that these passions, these loves in our heart, things that we love and things that we're passionate about, I believe that comes from God. That comes from the Holy Spirit within. And I believe they touch all different areas of life because God is interested in all areas of life, health, finance, you name it. And so then once God gives us the passion, I believe what we do is we apply ourselves to seeking God for revelation and gaining an understanding of, of this area and how this area works. So we may spend weeks or months or maybe even years pursuing this in depth. And as we do that, step number three, we receive insight. We receive revelation um, from people and from God. And um, in, in addition to receiving revelation from God, I believe we can receive an impartation from people as they lay hands on us and release to us the anointing that God has released into them. It's a, it's a step of faith. Jesus obviously laid hands on people and imparted spiritual energy to them. 
I believe we can do that also and should do that. And not just for healing, I think we can impart any anointing of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. If, if it's an anointing that is resident within you, I believe you can release it to others as you lay hands on them and, and, and speak that release to them. And number four, um, we ask God to release that anointing in our lives. And then we affirm in faith that we have it. I have it. God has given it to me. I don't keep begging him for it. I say, it's mine. I have it. So it's a step of faith and we're calling into being those things which maybe are not yet visible in the, in the three-dimensional world, but we see them in the spiritual world and we're calling them forth in the three-dimensional world. Abraham, God did that. He spoke the worlds into being. Uh, King David, he, he would say to the Lord, you are a shield. He didn't just say, Lord, please be my shield. He said, you are my shield. God said to Abraham, he said, I, will, I want you to say this. I want you to say, I am Abraham. Now he's, the word Abraham is father of multitude. He's 99 years of age, no children by his wife. And he's declaring, I'm the father of a multitude. He's not saying, God, please, please make your promise real to me. Please, please let my wife become part. He can say, I got it. I got it. This is who I am. So you're, you're declaring and speaking the reality into existence. You see it throughout scripture. You surely see it in Abraham, the father of faith. And each of us need to do that also. <clears throat> and number five, we, um, we use the language of the heart. <clears throat> Bible says out of the heart flows the issues or the boundaries of our life, how far we can go. And um, the language of the heart includes things like pictures, imagination of the heart. The Bible talks about imagination being in the heart. So I need to see it. I mean, God said to Abraham, see the millions of stars? You're gonna have that many kids. The next verse says, then Abraham believes. So, so that's part of filling the language of the heart. You, you not only speak it, but you see it. <clears throat> And what you see and gaze upon, you then feel. So emotion is part of the language of the heart. You feel impassioned uh, by it. And uh, flow is part of the language of the heart. We have a blog on the language of the heart, seven different elements of it. I'll give you a link to that below this particular podcast. And number six, you act in faith, allowing God to release his power, his anointing, and his glory into your life in this new way. Okay, so you step out, you just step out and, and begin believing, all right? So I've used these steps, you know, and I've seen breakthroughs. Uh, I remember John Wimber sharing that when he felt this passion to pray to, for people to see them healed, he prayed for 5,000 people to be healed before he saw the first person healed through his prayer. Once the first one was healed, then many, 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 very rapidly, many more got healed. So he pressed on into it, okay? Um, Edison pressed into it. He wanted to create a light bulb, had a passion, believed it was possible, did several thousand experiments before he got it the way he wanted it to be. I have done thousands of experiments in areas that God has given me a passion to master, I've worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, fine-tuned it, not giving up until God gave me the victory. Sean Bowles, this prophet out in Bill Johnson's church, he became proficient in receiving words of knowledge by practicing. And one of the things he did is he would take the church directory of the church that he was an associate pastor in, and every morning he would uh, take three names, next three names off the directory, ask God for a word of knowledge for those three people. He'd then call them up, ask them if they said he's one of the pastors of the church, ask if they had any prayer needs he could pray with them for. They would share with him and then he would be able to dovetail the word of knowledge God had given to him with the prayer need they have and then be able to minister that to them. And through that, he gained an ability to become precise in receiving words of knowledge the words of wisdom that could bring healing and freedom and deliverance to people's lives. So he practiced intentionally for weeks and probably month, well, actually years. I've, I've heard his testimony. He's practiced for years and his skill and anointing and the precision of his words is absolutely phenomenal. They, they take my breath away when I see him in crusades calling people out 
uh, and identifying them and identifying their needs. Just breathless, okay? So the question would be, if it takes you or I a year or two to master a new area and to move into a new level of anointing, is that too much time? <laughs> I don't think so. Not if it, for the rest of our lives, we can now live in this new level, this new faith and release this new anointing and this new impartation of the Holy Spirit. No, I don't think a year or two is, is too long at all to, to do that. Jesus said, uh, I, Ramus, the words that I speak, their spirit and life, John 6, 63, the flesh profits nothing. So what I do outside of the anointing has no value at all, according to Jesus, John 6, 63, pretty heavy, pretty heavy statement. And uh, through the anointing, we have all nine manifestations of the Spirit, gifts, gifts of the Spirit, and we have all nine fruit of the Spirit. We have everything we need by way of power and uh, godly personality available to us through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, those 18 things. So Joshua Mills, he calls this a new anointing in the Holy Spirit. He calls it a, a power portal that we walk through. And, and his book, Power Portals, there's a couple hundred pages describing this in detail in his own life, in his own experience. And you'll find your faith will, will, will rise as you read the book and it'll take you to a new level. <clears throat> So we end up doing what Abraham did. We say, I have the anointing too, and then we declare when we speak it. That's part, that's part of the process. And you know, I've decided that we never quit until we have the victory. And if that's our policy, if that's our plan, then we're never gonna fail because we're always gonna have the victory because we're not gonna quit until we get the victory. And if need be, we'll die in faith like some of the people in Hebrews 11, they died in faith believing for victories that didn't even come in their lifetime, but, but they died in faith. So here's a few verses that are very powerful verses. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifest through us his sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Always leads, come on, just, just say it. Jesus always leads me in triumph. Say it with me. Jesus always leads me in triumph. Say it over and over until you believe it. Do you see it? You believe it, you feel it. Another verse, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. We have the victory in Christ, already have it. Another verse, in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. We don't just win, we overwhelmingly conquer which is why I'm not too worried about the news or the government or anything else, because I have a promise. We, you and I, the church, overwhelmingly conquers. We have to believe it, have to speak it, and we have to press into it. Next verse, Philippians 3.14, Paul said, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So it's a constant upward call. We're constantly pressing into it opening new portals, new gates, new doors, and walking in new authority and new freedom. And that process continues, I believe, throughout our entire lives. At least that's what God intends for it to happen. To happen. Another verse for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, First John 5, 4. We believe that we have the victory. We believe that we can win. We believe that we do win. We believe that we are winning. You know, the impossible, what people have considered impossible has been done over and over and over and over by people who did not have the word impossible in their dictionary. They just took it out. And they just said, nothing's impossible. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. That's true of you. That's true of me. So I do love the book, Power Portals. I would encourage you to read it, encourage you to journal. 
about this podcast and say, Lord, what do you want to speak to me about the passions that you place within my heart and the new doorways, gates that you want me to walk through to release new anointings and new victories in my life? Let him speak to you and then take it. Go after it. Meet him halfway. Go after it <laughs> and be a world changer. All right. This is Mark Perkler signing off. <clears throat>